Hey y'all, and welcome to episode seven of The Best Wingman Around, where it's just another day and it's just another wing vlog. Welcome back. It feels like it's been forever, but really it's COVID. It's the panty. So um, in the words of my dear friend, Carmen, so what is time really? But gonna get right into it. Um, everybody has been watching is pretty much aware of what the impetus was behind um, starting the vlog. It was to bring attention to matters of social justice that I didn't feel like the NFL was adequately addressing. But at this point in the season, the NFL has been going through a lot of their own shit, for lack of a better word. And so I won't um, spend too much time on that. Um, I will say that I am super excited for the NBA season to begin in a little bit over three weeks. And uh, what I'm also talking about today, as I have been for the last couple of weeks, is I've been going to local Oakland restaurants um, that are known to have great wings and um, in keeping with the tradition of what I've normally done for football seasons past for 20 years or so. And uh, no need to um, fix a non-broken good thing. So um, today I have um, a guest I'm really excited to talk to. Um, I also have a restaurant that I'm going back to. Um, and uh, without further ado, I just want to get right into it. Hey, Adam. Hey, Julia, what's up? No, just chilling. Thank you so Happy much. Sunday. Happy Sunday. On the vlog. Happy Sunday. Thanks for having me. I like your shirt. Mm. I like your shirt. Great mind. Thank you. you know? Absolutely. A, a disclaimer to everyone out there. We didn't plan it. <laughs> what are you drinking? So this is a Carajillo. It's liqueur 43 and coffee. Like an okay. espresso martini, but it's uh, Spanish. So. Espresso martinis. <laughs> Reminds me of, of when you were visiting LA in May and yes. the four of us got a little loose. Just a little bit. Just, Just a, a little, little bit. bit. Like, I don't know how to quantify that on a scale of one to demon, but let's just leave it there. Yeah. So I think it's one to six, six, six. Mm -hmm. There you yeah. go. I think that's mm -hmm. a good, that's a good way of, uh, of quantifying it. Yeah. So we're going to start out with the wing trow, three questions, one sentence each answer. Number okay. one, what is your favorite thing about wings? The Victoria's Secret fashion show. Oh my God. Oh my <laughs> God. Are you on the right vlog? I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll um, find out. My favorite thing about wings, I mean, in reality, um, I don't know the spice. Okay. Spice mixed with the with the blue cheese dressing. Okay. All right. You're a blue cheese guy. I I'm a blue that. cheese guy. I just gave that away. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm, no, that's I'm, okay. that's not... I'm a buffalo blue cheese guy. Perfect. Okay. Um. Number two. What makes you a resident wing expert today for this conversation? Like a like I'm more of a Nashville hot chicken kind of guy. Mm, okay, what is that? I don't even know it. You're gonna have to say more. Well, it's from Nashville. Okay. It's chicken okay. and it's extremely spicy. I see, but what, is it not wings? Is it other? It's not, it's, I think it usually comes as a sandwich. Like it's kind of like a chicken breast, it's fried also. Okay. Um, but it's like, how would I explain it? It's like KFC if you were to dump ghost chili or ghost peppers all over it. Interesting. Um, there's the famous ones in Nashville are Prince's and Hattie B's. Okay. Um, and then they have some in LA too. They have like Hotville. Um, I think Hotville might actually be the family from Hattie B's. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm going to need to go there when I come to LA next because I've never heard anything about this. So I oh, think yeah. I'm getting educated. So that's okay. You're clearly a chicken expert. 
in some regard. Yeah. So, um, finally, third question, are wings an appetizer or are they a meal? Oh, appetizer, definitely. What is your supporting argument? I guess that's how I've always eaten them. Okay, I mean, fine. I just, I feel like I, my personal viewpoint on this is that it depends. On? Well, if you are um, in like a, a restaurant that happens to have wings on the appetizer menu and you want to, you know, you didn't come there for the wings, but if I'm like going to watch a game or something, that'll probably be my meal. You know what I mean? Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Where, what is the fanciest restaurant you've ever ordered wings in? So I was going to not, this isn't wings, but I was, but it is chicken. And I was going to talk about this later, but since you asked, Joe's. Stone crabs. Yes. So Joe's is also known for their fried chicken. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, since you're a Joe's connoisseur. I am. That's true. Um, and uh, we're going to have to have another conversation on another vlog about stone crabs. Well, but they're kind of in the same family. They're, they're appendages that are. That's a great served, point. I right. Mean, I mean, they are appendages for sure. Um, they're like chicken wings of the sea. That's true. And it's like bumblebee tuna. Um, yeah. Well, so Joe's uh, has yeah. really great fried chicken as well as, you know, stone crab claws. Okay. What about you? Um, I don't know. I don't think I've ever ordered chicken wings in a fancy restaurant. I'm trying to like, but I fried chicken though, I would say, so there's a Thai restaurant out here called mm -hmm. night and market and they have an amazing fried chicken sandwich. So I've gotten one there. Then you mentioned Joe's. So now I'm thinking about Miami. I know, you know, Yardbird, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Yardbird has amazing fried chicken as well um and then i mean i'm just going back to nashville yeah um i mean i i feel oh like oh oh my wife just my wife just yelled over um the other one that's amazing is the crack shack chicken sandwich which started in san diego and okay. they just opened up at the not just but like a couple years ago opened up in the century city mall and okay. that fried chicken sandwich is insane okay well there you go there you go yeah okay um yeah I think, you know, a lot of the time, um, Asian menus, like even like nice Asian restaurants always have chicken wings as kind of a, an app. Is it normally Chinese restaurants or is it, cause I mean, I said Thai, but. No, um, I actually, a few episodes ago went to a Thai place and they had, and they also are like one of the places around here called Funky Elephant that's known for, they're called party wings. So, um, I don't think it's just it's just Chinese, but I think across the Asian culture is Korean and and um, and Chinese and Japanese. Like they have, it's part of their like actual menu. So um, okay. So speaking of kind of the Far East cuisine and and as it applies to chicken, I know that in those cultures it's popular to chew on chicken feet. Yes, it is. It is. What's, what's your take on that? So, um, great question. Uh, one of the places that I, one of the, you know, most interesting places I've ever visited was Hong Kong. And um, I also say that I've ate some of the best food when I was there. And I'm also like, I'm foreign. So things don't really gross me out, like gizzards and shit like that. Like grew up eating that, whatever. Yeah. But... I had a chicken foot when I was in Hong Kong and the thing that was like the, I don't think I ate it right because like the texture of it is just like not, I don't, I don't. I would think it's like kind of gelatinous and cartilage-y. Yeah, it kind of felt like you, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, um, Okay, like like on a texture topic, I went to, um, this was in New York, we went to um, a Spanish restaurant. I forget the name of it. Uh, Toro. Do you know? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's by Del Posto. 
I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever been there. So it's a Spanish restaurant. So it's like high end, like nice Spanish restaurant. And they had bone marrow on the menu. And I like we, my ex-boyfriend and I loved that. So we would, we've, we had had it a bunch of times before and we got it there and they just undercooked it a little bit. So like that texture is like, that's a no. With the, with the what cheese, is that? Like? Is it like chewing on like cold fat? Yeah, it's like yeah, it's, it's not good. Rendered. It's just not. You're not even chewing on it. It's anyway because bone marrow in general, you're like putting it, spreading it on. Um, you smear it, yeah. Exactly, but it was just like not quite. You just didn't want to. You just didn't want to. Well, it's it. like it's like when you have a steak and when it's hot and fresh out of the oven, the fat's not really a problem because it kind of mm -hmm. melts, yeah. and then when it cools down, it's like chewy and gross. Yeah, exactly. Except in this case, you would have wanted it to be just more done, but it yeah. Was so that's the type of that that's probably the most unappealing texture I could think of the chicken foot situation was just like let's say you were eating you know like in a wing like the that pointy part but there was like a lot of it going on and you were just like I don't understand what the point is no that doesn't sound good like am I supposed to I don't I don't think you're supposed to chew it I think you're supposed to like pull it off the bone or something yeah. like that and I bit into it aggressively. Okay. So I think that was my mistake in in that um, in that experience. So all right. Yeah. Um, I mean, since we're talking about Asian food and weird things, what's the weirdest Asian or non-Asian thing that you could think of that you've eaten? I know you guys are very well traveled. The weirdest thing I've ever eaten would have to be, there's a lot. I'll give you some of the things that, that popped into my head when you asked that. I've eaten horse meat in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very tough. It's, yeah, um, I would or maybe, maybe not tough, but it's like gamey. Like yeah. there's not a lot of fat to it. Um, what else have I eaten? I mean, we eat escargot all the time. Um, the, what, what was it? Oh, we ate blowfish. Uh, 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 what was it? It was like the sack, like the the blowfish sperm, basically. Mm. Um, which is pretty good, honestly. It wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, the weirdest one for sure was in Paris a couple of years ago. We were at a restaurant called Clown Bar that's pretty well known. Mm -hmm. um, and their famous dish is cow brain. Okay. And it's prepared with like a... Um, I can't remember if it's like a Japanese yuzu sauce or something like okay. that, um, but I was terrified of it. Um, and like you said, I mean, we travel a lot and we we eat a lot. And um, the idea of this one, I just could not wrap my head around. And uh, my really? wife Tiana, yeah, yeah, my wife Tiana uh, said, "Well, you know, you don't have to try it, but I'm I'm having it." And, and I happened? realized, well, I realized quickly that if she tried it and I didn't, that I was not going to hear the end of it for years yeah. to come. Pretty much. So yeah, so I had to try it and um, it was actually very good. It kind of tasted like, so I'm a big foie gras fan. It sure. was kind of a, it was kind of a mix between flan and foie gras. Okay. Um, but with like kind of an interesting sauce on it, it was very good. Um, I got to say though, it, it came out, I thought it might be like prepared in a way where you couldn't see that it was a brain right. sort of. Yeah. And it came out as a full brain in a bowl. Wow. So, so even after I took the first bite going in for the second bite, I, I mean, I, I had the same kind of heebie jeebies or reservations that I had on the first bite. Um, yeah, I think that's gotta be the weirdest. I mean, um, Oh, the other one that was disgusting. It was awful. Um, and I actually, I got to preface this by saying I love Nordic food. Um, but we were in Iceland in 2016 and one of their delicacies is called hakarl, which is fermented shark. Um, okay. And so, so in Iceland, obviously they have freezing winters um, mm -hmm. and they need to preserve a lot of food. So a lot of the foods they cure and they bury and it you know, goes rancid, but it keeps, yeah. I mean, they say it keeps. Um, so we were at a restaurant, we ordered it because we felt like we had to try it. Yeah. Uh, um, and they serve it in a jar that is airtight and they close it because the smell is so putrid. It smells like, oh gosh. like the worst ammonia cat urine smell you've ever smelt in your life. What? So I took one, yeah, we took one bite of that and that was, that was pretty much enough. Yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they're, you know, all cultures have their like things. I, um, in Russian, like, oh, there's something that um, my, like my uh, childhood best friend and I would make fun of all the time. It's essentially like meat jello. It's called haladets and it's like meat jello and there's like chunks of meat in it and like egg and it's in every like any time that there's like a fancy gathering or whatever and like we just like didn't get it like i'm like i can't it's like jello that has meat chunks did and you try it of course i mean i i've like i it's been so long that i've had it that i can't like it tastes like you know chicken or whatever but like the te again the texture it's like why am i eating this in this form and i understand it's just the same thing like what you said about like the um the iceland the uh, fermented shark like obviously all of these types of things came from like necessity of there's a shortage of food so you have to use everything the gelatin to make this thing and then like whatever yeah. is lying around throw that shit in there but like i was just like I don't get what we're doing here with the meat jello and we need to put a stop to it. And it's like one of those things that like, if you, uh, which you probably don't, but like um, actually uh, my friend, the same friend like sent me um, a TikTok account where this girl talks about like all these things about being Russian. And, and you know, it's just one of those fucking things like uh, one of those things that like you had to be there, meat jello. Yeah. Not a recommend. Anyway. Um, well, actually, I Tiana keeps reminding me of other things that we've eaten really quickly before we before we move on from this. I have to. So we were in Finland for New Year's last year. We had brown bear in Finland. Okay. Which was pretty good. Um, we had reindeer. Depending on where you had it, it was a little gamey. And I think it was the older the reindeer, the more gamey it was, I believe, yeah. is, is what they said. Well, that's, um, we, medicine. that's not weird. I mean, it's weirder than normal, but it's not that weird. All right. When I say this one, you might get some hate mail about or hate mail about this. Uh, minky whale. What you is know what that? Is it's a type of whale that they that they hunt in oh. Iceland. I, they may have just banned it. Oh. Um, okay. But when we were there, we tried it, and it honestly kind of tastes like it tastes like I don't know steak. Yeah, I would imagine that you know, like the really huge fish, like swordfish starts kind of going into, away from the fish category into the like meat category, so. Yeah, so. You're seeing it's an endangered whale species. Yeah. It's fine, we've all, you know, sure we've all. But, but so I've been watching a couple of documentaries lately um, on Netflix. I watched Game Changers. Did you watch that? Did we talk about this? Um, I don't know that we talked about it, but I watched it. Yeah. Okay. So I watched Game Changers and then I watched one of the episodes of Zac Efron's new show that takes place in Sardinia, which is a blue zone where they have the mm -hmm. centenarians. Um, and both shows centered around the idea that uh, whether it's an elite athlete or people who live the longest in the world, all of their diets are primarily plant-based. Yeah. Um, which, you know, given how much we eat or not how much, but you know, all the various things that we eat, it's, it's really gotten me thinking about like what we're, what we're putting in our body. Yeah. When I watched game changers, I think it was around um, new year's and I was like, that's it. I'm going to be vegan for the rest of my life. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're like Arnold Schwarzenegger and stuff. You're like, I don't ever like clearly I, Jackie Chan clearly shouldn't be eating meat and like the my favorite thing was like because this was so like just straight into the point um the U of M athletes the U, the Miami athletes like where are they because now we're not even talking about like good we're not talking about like any type of like elite food product we're talking about like a chipotle bean burrito and like yeah it, or some fritos whatever they had and then like a meat one and what right. the effects were so yeah of course it makes you think but then you're like well but i like to go to different countries and eat all these things yeah and you're also like I, well, there was a good line they had like a strong man in the documentary and um 
he was saying something about somebody said, how do you just eat plants? You're as strong as an ox. And he said, what do you think oxes eat mm-hmm. or oxen? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like I, um, it was the guy who was like, the guy who was like moving like crazy amounts of weight, right? That guy? Yeah. And he had like a shoulder thing and he had like two guys standing on the side. Yes. And lift it and, yeah. Yes. That. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it does make you think about, um, going vegan, but mm-hmm. that's not what this vlog is about. This Definitely vlog, not. This vlog is about wings. So let's get right into it. So to preface this really quickly, um, a few weeks ago, I went to this restaurant. It's called Southern Cafe. It is um, on MacArthur Boulevard in Oakland. And Guy Fieri's been there. So it's like one of those, like, it's like a well-known place for, I know, but I'm saying like, in terms of like, it's like a place that, you know, is known to be like good. So let me give you a side, side comment really quickly. My nephew was visiting us uh, a couple of years ago. He was, I think he was probably around 14 or 15 at the time. And he was very into cooking. His mom, my sister kept telling me how into cooking he was. And so I was, I was getting really excited because I was really into cooking too, or I am into cooking. And he arrived and I said, so who's, who's your favorite celebrity chef? And I expected him to say, you know, like Anthony Bourdain or, you know, somebody like that. And he said, Guy Fieri. And we and spent the next two days. No, we spent the next, the next two days re-educating him. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying anything about Guy Fieri's chefing prowess. I'm just saying that it's a place that TV has gone. Yeah. Put it that way. Okay. So, um, so the last time I went to recap, um, I accidentally got turkey wings and that was a whole, that's an episode four, I want to say. Do you like turkey? So it's timely because we are about Thanksgiving's coming up. Um, I don't, I mean, yeah, sure. Like I, I made turkey. I used to make Thanksgiving dinner for my family for years. So like for like 15, 16 years and I got it down like where the turkey comes out great. It's not Mm -hmm. like my favorite food in the world, but especially when you put, well, wings, the wings and the legs are, are great. And like you get the breast meat to a good place. And like with, um, with uh this with like the stuffing and cranberry sauce i'm not a huge gravy person but whatever um it's it works it's good you know it's like a good base Mm -hmm. what about you i'm not a turkey fan i never have been my my father-in-law smokes turkeys every year and those are pretty good sounds good but overall i'm not really a turkey fan except every time i go to a carnival and i see like these guys walking around with these huge turkey like drumstick thing yeah turkey legs that always looks awesome but i know that i'm not gonna like it if i get it well the, again it's like turkey leg leg meat is like not gonna be dry but it does obviously have also that taste that you're yeah out with turkey meat like the thing is turkey is just so traditional and again as like a foreign kid like i had the you know the flexibility to decide like okay we're gonna do turkey forever yeah. now you know, we're going to do these sides and like, uh, and, and actually, since we're on the topic, like, um, you know, sweet potatoes and things like that are, are foreign for my family. So like figuring out dishes that kind of like fit with everybody's, like with the flavor profiles for, um, everybody, uh, was interesting, but we got there, but Turkey, I don't know. I mean, they, they were fine with it as far as like a meat. I think it's, I think that um, it is, you can overdo it because the majority of it is the breast meat. So it's like, if that's dry and gross, then you're not. And I've never, um, I mean, I've heard like in terms of the deliciousness of it, if you put it in a deep fryer or whatever, but like, I never did that, but I've heard that that's the way. I've heard that's how you get a big insurance payout on your house burning down. Well, that too. And you should yeah. be it in your house. <laughs> Just in the garage. Uh, perhaps in the backyard. Maybe in the backyard. Um, anyway, so 
I, um, so I go back to Southern Cafe. Oh no, so the first time I go, they give me turkey wings by accident, which I literally only realized like right as we're about to, to tape the vlog. So, you know, kind of roll with it, it was funny. And it's weird because obviously turkey wings are huge and they roast them. So it was like, um, and, and what was funny, Jesse had asked me on the, cause they were like in a gravy type sauce and they were good. Oh, they have to be fried though? I mean, that's not how they did them in here. Okay, all right. Um, and so they, um, and so Jesse asked me like, would you eat these like voluntarily? And I'm like, I don't know, like maybe if I was having Thanksgiving on my own, cause like what else would I be, like I'm not gonna like make a whole turkey alone, which was a portent for what's happening this week. But um, anyway, go and I actually get wings. And so, it's like it is the whole wing breaded style like this so okay. we have you know like it's all together it's breaded it's lovely see and, i like the like pizza place kind of wings see i felt that way before yeah. he disagrees i felt that way before and i then i had one of these style wing places and it changed my whole perception on it okay. and it really depends and let me let me describe to you why what my point is and saying all that so okay so See, you nodded before you could even taste it. Like, I don't believe you now. Like, like even before you like ripped it off, you were like, oh yeah. So I'm just saying. Well, I fucked up, Adam, because I've had these wings before. Okay, all right. But See, there's a bias going into this review. A slight bias given the fact that I went back. Okay. But um, what I will say is that I also, um, for my whole life up until you know i started doing this vlog it was like yeah like i need drums and flats and i need sauce and i need all this stuff but you can put hot sauce or whatever kind of sauce you want on your wings and so you know i think that if you um have a well-made breaded style wing and again it's like if you're into that if you're in the mood for that I think like the thing about these that I love is that um, it's not, let's see, Keith, I love that too. <laughs> really get in there. So anyways, um, so the, uh, like you can, yeah, you can put whatever sauce you want on it. And um, you know, with a breaded anything, you can obviously like the kind of risk is that it's gonna be like really breaded and like really hard and like rip your mouth up. And- See, I kind of like that. Well, I think that this would, like I think you would really love these because there's breading, but it's not like, it's not like all like hard and, and crunchy and stuff. It's just the right amount. And it holds the flavor of, um, there's a good amount of pepper in it, not too much salt, which is another thing like, um, places are just masquerading um like flavor under salt right yeah and so then you know if i like spice which i do put mm -hmm. hot sauce on it if somebody wants to you know put uh i see that's my thing it was like it sounds to me like you like spice but like if you're splitting with somebody or whatever and they don't eat spicy food which is bullshit and why are you even hanging out with somebody like that but whatever the situation might be um you know you can um you can add whatever you want to it especially in like a takeout environment mm -hmm. obviously if you're at the restaurant you know you're beholden to whatever it is that they have but um but my mind was changed on like wing style as a result of this and maybe as a result of going to southern cafe i don't know because that was the first place i went that i had wings like that so i'm gonna add this in so um, so what's the do you do like a barstool sports kind of thing where it's like one to ten you rate it 
I don't read it because it's okay. hard to, um, it's hard to, thank you for referencing that. That was the impetus behind this vlog. Okay. Um, Dave Portnoy, yeah. yeah. But um, I, uh, I don't read it because it's difficult to like compare one to the other, um, like, and give people a, um, frame of reference and I was trying to do it as compared to Buffalo Wild Wings but to be quite frank like all of the local places I've had are about better than Buffalo Wild Wings so Buffalo yeah. Wild, Wild Wings is like a I went at the before I started doing all of this to just kind of set a baseline in my brain but um it's like a basic I didn't even know what wings were and then I mean I had had like Asian like Chinese food wings when I was growing up. And then right. when I was in college, um, I worked at Buffalo Wild Wings. And- um, Oh, you did? Yeah. And so that was kind of like where like I found out about like what, like wings were like different flavors, all these things, whatever. Um, and then, but again, I've always been like, I think it's a, a function of growing up in New York City, like they actually didn't have Buffalo Wild Wings in, in New York City at that at that time. Now there is one, or probably more than one. But um, I have just never been a big fan of chain restaurants. No. I, and not because I'm like, I have any sort of like complex against them. It's just like, I never, first of all, they're not super accessible where I was growing up. And secondly, there was no need for that. Like you would get pizza at like a local pizza place and anything you wanted Chinese obviously local um and Indian and everything like that you know I forgot one thing about when I was growing up um you know I did say that I like wings from like pizza places mm -hmm. but do you remember or have you ever had Domino's chicken kickers no Okay, they're not quite chicken wings, but they're like little chicken nuggets. Okay. And they are... Is it boneless wings or is it nuggets? Yeah, they're like boneless wings. They are so good. Occasionally you get like kind of a gross one that has like some gristle or some like cartilage in it. Okay. But for the most part, if you don't get one of those, they're fantastic. And they come with both hot and uh, hot sauce and blue cheese sauce. Those things were outrageous. Um, I'm not a good person to ask about Domino's because I had Domino's for the first time in Miami with Vasti. Did you like it? Oh, you know, the first time I had it, I did. I really like, I don't know what, we got like a thin crust pizza or whatever. It's just, but I'm saying like, I had Domino's for the first time like a lot later in life. There, I mean, there were times when I would just order chicken kickers and cinnamon sticks and that would be good. I just like- even So I guess then it was, it was, a, it was an entree. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But yeah. what's even a wing? We don't know. You know? Yeah, I don't know. So, Have you ever had Peruvian rotisserie chicken? Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I that's my jam. Peruvian food in general is awesome. Yeah. I have some like pretty good spots uh in uh well in New York that, that like that were kind of neighborhood spots, also in uh, Miami. Did you ever go to Pio Pio in New York? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that place is the best. Yeah. That yeah. green sauce. Although I don't know how, I mean, the chicken's good. It's really good. But I don't know if I would like it as much without the green sauce that they give you with it. Yeah, but it's a whole experience. It's a whole vibe. Yeah, for sure. Which one did you go to? Uptown. On the east side or the west side? East side. 90th and 1st, I think? Uh, yeah whatever I think that's, yeah on the upper east side yeah that, i think that's the original one i think so too yeah i well anyway adam always a pleasure yes thank you for having me on the show thank you for having the vlog coming on the vlog um can't wait to see it i you know whatever yeah oh, i'm i'm a not so closeted fat kid Listen, um, especially in COVID times, what else is there to do? And I will say, um, a few weeks ago, I got an air fryer and you just air fry everything. There you go. Your own wings. Actually, right behind my computer screen, my wife has pulled out some very stinky cheese that I am going to get into as soon as we hang up.
Sounds amazing. Yep. So. Well, I will say hi for you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your wings. Like Enjoy what? the Chris Brown playlist that I've been listening to. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Of course. I'll Have talk to you later. Monday. Bye. Thanks. Bye.